Okay, my friends, it is scorching out here today. It is 90 degrees and I'm dying in the sun. In fact, I feel like I am in my solar cooker and I don't want to be in my solar cooker, but I feel like I'm in it and I want to get out of it. And here's a great question when it is 90 degrees and you live off the grid. Air conditioning, off grid air conditioning. Is that even a possibility? Well, you know, one thing about me and Mr. Hilder is we think outside the box. We're all about the self-sustainability, right? And we do so frugally, practically, and we do it in a manner that really fits well with our philosophy living here off the grid. So we're gonna take you inside where it's really cool. Yeah, and we don't have an air conditioner. No, we have a solar oven, but we don't have an air conditioner. And we're going to discuss some of the things that we did to avoid the whole air conditioner thing, dilemma, expense, whatever you want to call it. Now, air conditioning off the grid is doable, but for us, wasn't part of the plan. But we're going to go inside and talk about it. Let's go where it's cool. I'm going to show you. The proof is in the pudding. Inside. So despite the beautiful scenery, it is very hot out here. And we're going to come right into the off-grid, self-sustainable arena. And the first thing I'm gonna show you is the temperature. We're gonna walk on over here and, oh, look at how lovely that is. Hmm, now that's pretty cool. Is that even doable? Where's the air conditioning? Where are the fans? Well, my friends, there aren't any. So real quickly, before we get started into the tips, to how you can avoid the whole air conditioning thing is just remember off-grid solar is really a, a set it and forget it mentality our system we've got two charge controllers 16 solar batteries and a magnum inverter and really we we don't do much of anything to the system you know every couple months we check the batteries we fill it with distilled water easy peasy so it really is set it and forget it. Now, the beauty of the solar system too is that you can size it according to your electrical needs. If you want a air conditioning and a washer and dryer and a water vacuum and you want a freezer and a refrigerator, you can have all of that, but you have to properly size it. And of course, the more toys you want, you're gonna pay a little bit more. But we always look at it as an investment in your self-sustainability. That's how we look at it. Our system is a little bit smaller, and we really did have a think outside the box mentality. We didn't want to bring the whole grid up here to the mountains. In fact, we wanted to have a self-sustainable lifestyle that wasn't so reliant on electricity. Even though we have a two kilowatt array, we still use electricity very conservatively. We changed our whole way of thinking when it comes to electricity. And if something happens, like a catastrophe strikes, and this whole thing gets burnt up and incinerated, well, it could. Not really, but just pretend. We have set this homestead up to run on zero electricity. For us, that works. That's how we wanted to set it up. And now I'm going to talk about some tips uh, that can kind of bypass all of this and not go down the road of spending extra money and getting extra panels and a bigger inverter. Things that you can do right now or before you even go off the grid. Okay, let's go inside the house and we'll talk about it. Okay, number one, if you have the benefit of building ground up, this is what me and Mr. Hilder did. Passive solar design. You have to implement it into your building plan. What we ended up doing was buying a piece of property that was benched and we actually used the earth. We used the earth and we decided to build on a slab. Why? Because of thermal mass. Thermal mass can be used for heating and for cooling. The more thermal mass you have, uh, the, the more you increase your heating and cooling ability of your home. This is the thing with thermal mass. It has the ability, whatever, whatever it is, water, concrete, uh, cement, a stone, to absorb and store energy, such as heat. 
I'm going to show you what we have here real quickly so you understand it. In the winter, when we have the wood stove going, the heat is absorbed and stored and released in that slab. That becomes our heat source. And so does the windows that have been designed into this house to have the rays of sunlight, light, solar energy, hit the slab and heat it up. Again, the light, the sun's energy, heating the slab and also using the wood stove. Now in the summertime, with a properly placed, and you will see out the window, it's closed right now, with the shades, but we have an overhang that blocks the sun and we use the shades. So what happens is the house stays cool, the slab stays cool, and during the nighttime when the temperatures drop, the slab actually even absorbs more of the cool earth to act as a air conditioner. Pretty groovy. So passive solar design, if you have a chance, will make your house so energy efficient that you can actually have a smaller array, a smaller solar system, save money there, and invest it in other parts of your self-sustainable homestead. Pretty cool. So that really is the benefit when you are building from ground up. Now, let's talk about if you don't have the opportunity to build ground up. You know, you're like living it now, now, and you need to make some changes because it's hot out there. Here's some starting tips. These are tips that actually we have implemented too to keep the house cool. Number one, blinds. Get blinds on your windows. Number two, open all the doors up during the night to get the cool air in and then close it up during the day. Keep all your other doors in your house closed and cook outside. Remember that solar oven that I have? Solar ovens, Dutch ovens, I've got an outdoor kitchen set up. Don't cook inside during the day. And then long term, what you want to look at is a nice overhang, maybe an awning, investing in that, and investing in planting trees. And make sure they're fruit trees because then you will get food and you will get shade. So you see, there are many things that you can do to address no air conditioning, but still have the benefit of air conditioning off the grid. Pretty cool, isn't it? See, I tell you, this thinking outside the box thing really does work and it doesn't cost anything. So free off grid air conditioning. There you go, friends. Thanks for visiting Starry. And don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe and visit me on Facebook. And, you know, give me a thumbs up if you can. And leave a comment. I love your comments. All right. God bless.